Hi, so I'm Cesar. Uh, I work at Treasure Data as a software engineer, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about Redux Search, which is a library that we wrote like maybe a couple months back. Uh, so to start giving you guys some background, uh, we've been rewriting our web console for roughly the last six months using React and Redux. And our tech stack also includes stuff like Webpack, Babel, uh, Immutable JS. Uh, yeah, so this has sort of, uh, this is sort of uh, something that we've developed as like the need arose. And we thought, oh, this is actually, it might be useful for other people. So we decided to open source it. Yeah. So since I'm not sure how many people here are familiar with Redux, I want to uh, do a, like a quick run through of like some terminology so that hopefully we're all on the same page. Uh, so Redux is a state container for JavaScript apps. And if you're familiar with Flux, it's basically a Flux implementation uh, where it maintains the whole state in like a single object. Yeah. Uh, so then Resource map, that just means like an object where the keys are IDs and the values are the entities. And a selector is just a function that receives state as a parameter and it can compute derived data. So it means that you can keep your state, uh, your state tree smaller and then you can use selectors to calculate changes that are uh, like any other changes without having to actually store all of this data in your actual state tree. And a store enhancer is a higher order function that composes the store creator uh, to return a new enhanced store creator. So that basically means that you can like wrap your store creator and add, add on like your own extra functionality to it, basically. Uh, so the problem we were facing was pretty straightforward. We wanted to search for resources inside of our state tree. So we have certain resources which can be, we can fetch uh, the entire resource and keep it in memory. And it's very convenient to be able to search uh, for that specific resource for our users. And since we could load all of it in memory, we didn't, we didn't see the point of like having to do constant requests and like it would obviously end up being slower than just doing it in memory. Uh, so the original solution that we arrived at was using JS search. So, uh, Brian Vaughn is a front-end engineer at Treasure Data, and he had originally written this library. And we thought, oh, you know, this works great. Like, let's just plug it in and use that. Uh, so basically, we would have like a resource map selector, and it would generate a JS search instance. And then uh, any time that resource map changed, it would create a new JS search instance. Uh, and then the result of that, you could pass it a text selector, and eventually you just get like a list of IDs, which is what you actually ultimately care about. So uh, this is roughly what your state ends up looking like, right? So you have the uh, search text, and then you have an object of resources, and here we have items, and like item one has an object, item two, yeah. Uh, and this is just a visualization of the selector. So you have like to pull out a resource map selector and like then you create a uh, search indexer and then you pass that uh, or you compose that with the search text selector and then you use that selector to actually pull out the array of IDs. So it, it becomes a bit annoying, I guess. Uh, so this led to an, a new problem. We want to search resources but without lag and uh, this solution, it solved the problem, but it caused hiccups, because any time that the resource map changed, uh, we had to recreate the whole index, and that obviously sucks, right? That's gonna be, that's gonna cause way too many problems and way too many hiccups. It's not acceptable, it doesn't feel good. Uh, so from this, eventually, uh, we managed to create Redux Search, which is a library that, uh, it is a store enhancer for Redux, and it tries to solve this problem reasonably. Uh, so it, when you create your store with Redux, 
you can pass multiple selectors for each of your resources. And whenever a resource changes, it will set, it'll get sent to a web worker. And the web worker will re-index this resource. And then you're also given a set of action creators and selectors. So you can uh, query against it, basically. And this is what your state and selectors basically end up looking like, right? So we'll track if it's actually searching or not, because any time that you search, since this has to go to a web worker, it's asynchronous. So it means that the value that you have in your result might be outdated at the exact time that you read it, because uh, a response will eventually arrive, but it might not, it's not synchronous. Uh, so then result is just like the array of uh, IDs, and text is the search text, and below is the resource, which we are also searching. Uh, but it means that your selectors are pretty straightforward. You just have like a factory function where you pass it something like uh, search selectors, like items, and you can get uh, the full list of like results for that specific resource. So it's, it makes it convenient. Uh, so some of the, or one of the big features that we focused on was making sure that this would be easy to test because we want to make sure that none of our stuff breaks. Like we don't want to have, and if we solve a problem, we don't want to have to keep going back and fixing it repeatedly. So uh, the library makes sure that it, it's easy to test. And like, we just enable you to pass like a simple mock. And that mock just lets you uh, run your tests synchronously, which is reasonable. Uh, it's also incredibly fast. Like, uh, I'm going to show a demo after this. And you can basically maintain 60 frames per second in your application. Uh, or the search will not be your bottleneck. You can obviously do lots of terrible things that will kill performance, but searching for your resources will not be the thing that uh, causes the slowdowns in your app. So here we have a demo. This is with using uh, immutable JS, and it, we just generate like a list of random names. Like you can search it. And this will actually send the uh, search text to the web worker. And then the web worker will just return the array of IDs. So here we're doing like 1,000 records, but you don't notice like any kind of performance issue. And you can keep, go like, you can keep increasing the number uh, of items, and it works really well. Yeah. And here, it's basically the same thing, but for arrays of objects. Yeah. It was uh, a big focus for us was performance. And aside from Redux search, something that has also helped our performance, and uh, something I also just want to briefly mention, uh, is uh, React Virtualized. So this was also made by one of the front-end engineers at Treasure Data. And the basic idea is to not render anything that's off screen, which is like pretty common, especially on mobile when you have these list views that can have like hundreds or maybe thousands of items. Like you want to avoid work as much as possible. Uh, so here we also have a quick demo where this has a thousand rows and I will not be refreshing it because uh, the internet is, is dead, so it might fail. <laughs> but uh, if you switch from this screen to another, and then you render this, uh, this will only have to render what's on screen. So that means that it's very fast. So I guess that's everything.